We have a design class in here uh, where the students in lower school, K to five, come in once a week for a scheduled class. We really want to get the whole design process involved in this, where students are thinking about what they're doing, building, constructing with a plan. I'm hoping that the K through two students get a chance to discover. So I want there to be living things outside. I want there to be things that make them curious and see how what we're learning in class applies to the real world. I feel like not just with this building, but in this world we live in, it's important for kids to have experience with coding and designing and building and robotics and all that kind of stuff. I'm teaching a new class this year in middle school called Impact, and we meet in the telepresence room. It's really a self-awareness class that allows them to figure out who they are as a leader. So I teach eighth grade science, and we focus mostly on chemistry. My role is to sort of facilitate using the tools in the BitLab and basically trying to get as many kids exposed to making in the makerspace or using the tools in the Fab Lab as possible. I've wanted to teach food science for several years now. It's kind of always been in the back of my head as like a dream course if I could teach anything I wanted to. We're going from microscopic to global. So we started the year with what's in our food and the science of cooking and the chemical reactions that occur when you cook food. And now we're moving sort of a little bit bigger and thinking about where does our food come from. This is the innovation lab. So what we do here is we start our own company and we basically um, compete in a Shark Tank-esque competition. In the Digital Media Center, middle and upper school students are telling stories through video. In the X Lab, I teach uh, Algebra 2. So I teach uh, Advanced Algebra, Trig, Honors Geometry, and Precalculus. All five of my classes are in that room. The biggest difference I've noticed from this classroom and the previous classrooms is the ease that students feel to work with one another and collaborate. This gives them a real feel of what it's like to be in a startup. You go to downtown or New York or Silicon Valley, you'll see offices set up in the same manner. They're flexible spaces, they're multi-purpose, and they give opportunity for collaboration from every corner and every nook of this room. So we're learning about farming, how to grow a plant, how animals are raised and what they're used for. And eventually by the spring, we'll think about how is food transported around the world? What are the implications of that? And finally, the future of food. So, you know, our population is about to be 8 billion people. How are we gonna feed that many people? If NASA decides to send humans to Mars, what are they gonna eat? My first trimester class was called Maker Lab, and the idea was for students to learn how to take in that whole creative process from idea generation through troubleshooting and prototyping and then having a finished prototype or product at the end and then how to talk about that and present that to others. Right now, the Impact students are working with the Badlands in Rockville, Maryland, and they are designing an activity, an event, or a hands-on manipulative that the Badlands can use for children who are five or under. You get a little bit of the business side, because they get to talk to people, and they get to interview people and find out their needs. And then we also get kind of the creativity aspect of stuff where we get to throw out wild ideas, as Mr. Kazmarski would say, and we get to narrow them down and figure out how we're gonna use them to ours and the company that we're working with best advantage. So the Robot Petting Zoo was intended to be a little bit of a design thinking type challenge for them because they learn coding, they learn the mechanics of robotics, and they learned the idea of input and output. So for instance, petting the tiger caused a distant sensor to trigger, and then it would growl, uh, its legs would move, and its eyes would light up. Z-Space is used in eighth grade as a supplement. For example, right now they are using the periodic table, and they're able to manipulate molecular structure and atomic structure. You don't have to touch the screen, but there's like a mouse where you can drag out the picture and you can look at the 3D dimensional of like whatever you're looking at, like molecules or like a, a human heart, which is really cool. Part of my goal is to have teachers and students see this space as more of a library than like a science lab so that it's a, it's a resource that's available to everybody. Ms. Shikan came and said, you know, we're doing contour line drawings and I'm kind of interested in screen printing. So we designed a project where they were actually doing drawings on paper. They then made them really high contrast and we scanned those to digitize them and then we 
put them into a vinyl cutter and then we could assemble screens for screen printing and use the sticky vinyl to put in there and use it as a mask for the screen printing. Booyah. Our kindergarten class was a really good example of what I'm trying to do with them. We started by reading a story-ish, which is about creativity and design, and sort of thinking outside the box. And then I broke the students up into two groups. Half of them were working on a construction tool using magnetic tiles, and the other half of the class were taking the Kibo robots, where the students program them, but they don't program them on an iPad or using anything electronic. They're scannable blocks, so they design the system on there. In kindergarten, learning about trees and weather. First grade is studying plants and animals. In the second grade, they get into what plants need and, and how to grow plants. So Claire Walker Leslie came to Bullis to help us with a deeper understanding of the power of observation. The outdoor classroom has been a foundation that we can lay to create places for kids to discover. This space, the telepresence room, has allowed us to communicate with the folks at Badlands. And we were able to talk to them about what they wanted with our designs. So the room has four large tables that students sit at, and they can be arranged in a format that looks like an X, which is where we get the X lab from. I have always been a teacher who's really tried to get kids up and working in groups and talking to each other and so it's actually been a nice space because I didn't have to fight with the space to get them in the groups that are already in groups and it just makes it really easy for them to talk. And there's really no front of the classroom. The students can always find some place to look. The lab space is incredible. <laughs> Just having that huge classroom where we can sit and have a discussion or take notes on something, and then I can say, okay, let's go do the lab, and we can stand up and move to an even bigger space. So it's like you have like your learning, and then you have like your hands-on area. The space is great. The innovation lab is amazing, and these study rooms that we have are really key. It's really great for collaborative thinking because like you can really work with your team or also just other classmates and like working on your homework or projects together. Me and my friends love to go to the 1930 Grill, just hang out, just do some homework, uh, relax, and it's just very open, a lot of sunlight, and it's just an excellent place to either hang out or get some work done. It's interesting to see students that come in for a project and then feel comfortable coming back again later to do something of their own or, or doing something during 20 time or after school. And then certainly we have like the robotics activity is in here right now and, and they I think really love all the access to different tools that are, are letting them focus more on the problem solving aspects of robotics than I need to spend a half hour cutting through this piece of metal <laughs> with a hacksaw. The space has been wonderful and it's exciting because it's only in its first year and I really look forward to kind of laying some foundations for the coming years. And being around all these things, seeing what the older students are doing when they walk by the bit lab or even coming in this room and seeing things that other kids have made I think is really inspiring to all of them from K to five. I hope that the students take away a deeper understanding of their content knowledge as well as a heightened enthusiasm for learning. We're using our knowledge of math and of science and our creativity and applying it to solve a problem. So I want the students to try something and if, when it doesn't work, and that's when, not just if, what went wrong? How do I figure out what are the various solutions I can use to efficiently uh, fix this? It's really neat to say to a second grader, what you're doing is engineering. If I really were to break it down to one thing, it's how to get from an idea to an end project, and then how to message that end product. The professional tools that we can provide are allowing students to gain real world experience and more importantly, it's allowing them to realize their creative visions to tell compelling stories in a medium that's becoming more and more important. A hammer seems simple and a 3D printer seems complicated, but it's still just a tool. And if you spend a little bit of time understanding how it basically functions, then you start to feel a little bit of ownership over that. And that gives you ideas as to what you can do with a 3D printer going forward. Instead of the feel of work, or this is just your typical studying class, they feel like they're building something that's theirs and it's fun. We don't stand up to kindergartners and ask them to take notes for 40 minutes and repeat what the teacher says. You know, they're hands-on, they're building, they're exploring. This building gives us a chance to do that for all the students. And it reminds us all as teachers what that's like and the importance and value of what people call lifelong kindergarten. 
If you want your children to get the real world experience and uh, to give your child a, a leg up, this is the place to come. It's just invigorating and positivity just emanates throughout the building. I have the amazing opportunity to learn in these amazing classrooms that look like college classrooms. This is the year that we're doing a lot with the building, but I feel like the dreaming has only just begun. And as we you know, spend this year in the building and talk to each other and look at what each other does, it will just grow. Whenever I am on the bus coming into Bullis, I like am like amazed that I'm going to this school because this building has really transformed this campus and the teachers are really amazing.